Well, hello everybody. It's wonderful to have you with us. I pray wherever you are that you know that God is with you exactly in the place where you are. Starting something new, like a new year, is very important. Establishing our way of thinking, establishing how we're going to approach what happens is very, very important. St. Paul in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, we read it yesterday, said this, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Again, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Do not be conformed to this world. What Paul is saying is don't think like the world. Don't behave like the world. Because as a Christian, we're called to live, to be, to act differently. And it's in that living and being and doing differently that we experience the blessing because God in our, because of God in our life. Well, when we're beginning something new, when we're beginning something new in life, What I have often found in my own life and listening to many, many, many people and talking to many people is that one of the things that holds people back from stepping into the new is sometimes a sense of disappointment with where they are. And what do I mean by that? I'm not talking about being depressed or, you know, no, I'm talking about that sense of disappointment that, that, that sometimes we look at our life where we are And I have talked to very wealthy people, very powerful people, people on the surface who are very successful. And if you talk with them very honestly, they'll share with you. They take you aside and they say, hey, Bruce, I want to share with you some things. And they share about the fact that there are areas of their life where they just wish that things had been different. They maybe weren't the best of parents. Their marriage they didn't invest into in the right way. They've missed opportunities with study. They've made some mistakes in business uh, with friends. And the list goes on and on and on. And and people have, have, have done things that they wish they hadn't done. They've slept in a bed that they wish they hadn't. They've said something they wish they hadn't. They've judged someone in a way they wish they hadn't. And what happens is that, that the cons, these build-up of things in our lives causes an element of disappointment with us that even though at various times spiritually we can deal with, if we're not careful, they can rise to the surface again. There are some people who are thinking, well, 2023, great opportunity to have a fantastic new year. And then this thought comes in their mind, but, but look at who I am. Look at what I've done. Look at the mistakes I've made. Look at where I could have been. Look at the missed opportunities that there were and, and that I missed. And there's that sense of disappointment. And, so, and, and what disappointment does is it robs us of the power of being able to step into the future. It robs us of energy of being able to step into the future. And so what it does is that we is that we approach the future uh, not as confidently, not as excitedly, not as energetically as we could. Now, there's a, there is in the spiritual life healing. And we all are familiar with the healings of Jesus, which seem to be all very much about physical things. But often those healings extended far more to things that were happening emotionally, psychologically within people. That, that there is healing that we all require in our life because the truth is there are things we've done. I know there are things I've done, things I've said, things, opportunities I've missed, mistakes I've made. I've got such a list that I could talk about. And, 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 and it does make me feel disappointed at times. And then when I come along and I go, well, here comes another year. Here we go again. Here's another new opportunity to to move ahead. There's that little bit of part of me and that little voice of the evil one that sits on your shoulder and say, that says, look at who you are. Look at what you've done. Look at what you've missed. Look at who you are. And the truth is, there's some truth to that. But the scriptures teach us, Jesus teaches us, is that we can be made new by inviting Jesus into our life 
And even though we may know of the things we've made mistakes, they don't have to hurt us if we experience emotionally and psychologically the healing that Jesus uh, can give us. Uh, if you were to look at my knees, they're quite scarred. And the reason they're scarred is because once I fell off a bike and, and it was an, uh, of a bicycle and I really badly damaged my knees and really, really hurt them and it was, it was terrible. And if you see my knees, the scars are there, but want to know something, if you press on them, touch them, nothing hurts anymore. Because the evidence of the mistake, the, the accident was, is there, but there's no longer any pain. The problem with disappointment is that we can see and know the scar, but we feel the scar and it, it, it causes us to hold back. It causes us not to experience all that God wants for us as we step into the future. Maybe your marriage is not or was not what it's meant to be. Maybe you weren't that parent that you thought you could be, you wanted to be, and you look back now and go, if only I'd known. Maybe you've made some mistakes in your life and the list goes on and on and on. You didn't study the way you were. You made some poor decisions about business. You didn't commit to your work life. You didn't save enough money, et cetera, et cetera. The list is so long. Well, you live, yes, with the consequence of that, but you don't have to feel the sting of it if you invite Jesus into your life. And you come before Jesus and you do a couple of things. You say to Jesus, Jesus, forgive me and heal me. Jesus, forgive me and restore me. Jesus, forgive me and make me as if I'm new. For some of you, this will probably be the most important daily devotional of 2023. You woke up today and whatever time you're watching this, it's because you needed to hear this, that if you seek God's forgiveness, and you seek his healing, God will give it to you. That you will be transformed of mind and thought so that you can judge what is good, what is pleasing and perfect. And the secret is, God, I'm sorry, now heal me. And I leave behind what I have done. Yes, I know what I've done, the scars are there, but it doesn't hurt anymore. There are so many things I could share with you about this. and. And I will in, in the coming months. But today, why don't you say to the Lord, Lord, there are some things I'm disappointed about. But as I start this new year, forgive me that I didn't act, didn't do, failed in those ways. Forgive me. Now restore me. Because you, you came and gave your life. You died and you rose so that all things were made new again. And want to know something? You'll still know, but the hurt, Will be gone. Loving Father, I thank you today that you're with us. I pray, Lord God, right now that we could say, I'm sorry, forgive me for my mistakes, for my shortcomings, for my weakness. I'm sorry. Now, Lord God, would you heal me? Would you make me like new? Would you bring peace to me? Even though I have knowledge of what has happened, would you grant me peace in my spirit? so that I can judge what is your will, what is good, pleasing, and perfect to you. And Father, we make this prayer in the name of Jesus, through the power of your Holy Spirit, amen. Of course, in just a couple of minutes, I can't pray as long as it would be great to be able to pray, but today in your personal prayer, why don't you sit down and pray and ask the Lord to work in your life in this powerful way. For some of you, this will be the most powerful uh, daily devotional of 2023. Hey, God bless you. See you next time. And don't forget, wherever you are, God is never far from you.